The board of Bahamar is now dissolved, substantiating an end to the Ismerlian leadership at the resort. Our Clint Watson talked to the only Bahamian sitting on that board who says they no longer had a role to play. There was nothing left for us to do. The company is under the control of somebody else. We were appointed by Sarkis Ismailian, and as he is no longer in control of the project, we thought it befitting that we all stand aside. And based on that notion, the five board members of Bahamar all resigned from their positions. Local businessman and CEO of Superwash, Dionisio Diagula, was the only Bahamian sitting on the board. He's not sold on the liquidation process and felt the Chapter 11 bankruptcy was the best avenue to take to get the resort back on track, opened, and creditors paid. Chapter 11 process would have kept the asset moving, would have kept the, the developer, the brainchild, the one who is most passionate about the project involved. And I feel, I personally feel as a businessman, that this was the better solution. And you know what? At the end of the day, look where we are. This week, Prime Minister the Right Honourable Perry Christie announced China XM Bank's agreement to provide interim funding to complete the resort's construction. Mr Christie also admitted that he had been pressing the bank to make some critical decisions in order for construction to resume. However, he was awaiting those answers. Diagla, though, is not surprised at the bank's slow pace. At a Chinese bank owned by a government, and we all know what things owned by governments are like, they move very slowly. And the asset is, is, is owed $2.4 billion. The bank is owed $2.4 billion. Obviously, no one's going to offer them that. So we have to wait and see, and they have to evaluate their options, and it's going to take time. As to where this now leads the developer, Sarkis Israelian, the Aguilar doubts he'll be able to recover the millions of dollars he's invested. I don't think he will receive anything. I don't think he will remain involved unless he is a part of the group that ends up buying it from the bank. Tiagula says it's based on this why he felt Chapter 11 was best, because it would have kept the developer involved. As to whether Ismerlian will remain in the country, Tiagula thinks he will, and in fact hopes they can convince him to continue investing in the Bahamas. Clint Watson, ZNS Network News. Thanks so much, Clint. A gas station owner with a reputation for low prices is responding to complaints from his neighbors concerning the development of a gas station just feet from their home. Our Jared Higgs has been following this developing story and has the latest. Last week, ZNS News introduced you to two families in Ferguson subdivision off Carmichael Road complaining of a gas station being developed near their wall. Well, the developer of that gas station and the Bargain City complex, Peter Roker, is telling his side of the story. Despite reported indications that the project bypass crucial vetting from the Ministry of Environmental Services, Roker insists that his permits are legitimate. I want to state that I have all of the necessary permits for what I need to do there. That's number one. Number two, I think that this whole matter was preempted in saying that um, at this point, I have a hole in the ground. I can put a hole in the ground anytime I want to put a hole in the ground. But I can assure you that, that there was no bypassing of anything. When asked about the stop order that was reportedly issued on the project, Roker says he has yet to receive it. And although the businessman says the issue was preempted by the Ministry of Environmental Health Services, he did reveal what the holes in the ground were for. The permit that I have is specifically for a service station and whatever it takes to run a service station. It is also for a tire shop, which I feel could be an integral part of the operation. And it's also for a car wash, which I also feel could be or will be an integral part of the operation. The two families complaining about Roker's development have been living in the Carmichael area for more than 30 years. While they have their differences, the gas station owner wants to sustain an amicable relationship with his neighbors. Uh, these are very fine people. They're elderly people. Uh, they have been in this area for a very long time. And the most important thing in my mind in me dealing with them would be to assure them that we are on the same page as far as this whole country is concerned, but in particular as far as this area is concerned as being safe and sound and environmentally in the right condition.
For his part, Mr. Roker says the purpose of the project is to improve the level of service that he's able to provide for his customers. And with that being said, the Carmichael Road-based businessman says construction on the project will continue. Jared Higgs, ZNS Network News.